Good morning. We want to welcome you this morning to, to Hope First Baptist Church. Thank you for coming and joining us in worship. What a beautiful Sunday morning it is to be inside and worshiping God. Every day is a good day to worship God, and, and we're, we're glad that we can come together as a, as a church family and worship. Thank you for joining us. We pray that you are blessed by this worship service today. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet out on the, the side wall as, as you leave for snacks for youth group, Youth 180. Uh, Jamie and, and Brent would appreciate it if someone would sign up to, to supply snacks. Uh, if you have questions, ask um, Jamie about that, uh, the number and what kind of snacks they might be. Uh, so, so plan on that. There is a, um, an item in the, the bulletin about Clarity's annual fundraising banquet. Uh, if you want to be involved in that, take time to, to check that out. It's, it's what, virtual, online this year, but it's, you have to go online to register or call to register. All that information's in the, in the bulletin, so, so take a look at that. Well, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is next Sunday morning, we're starting full Sunday school again. Yay! The bad news is we have to set our alarms an hour earlier. <laughs> hey, that, that's just practice for the following weekend because time changes. <laughs> so, all right. But, but, Could have been a double whammy. Yeah, double whammy. Uh, but yes, uh, children's adult Sunday school, all, all starting next Sunday uh, at 9 o'clock. So come to, come to participate in that. And it is good to see Janet McKinney back in worship service with us this morning. <laughs> Will you join me in prayer today, please? Our dear Heavenly Father, we, we do thank you that, that we have this building that, that you have provided for us that we can come and, and gather as a church family and, and have fellowship before and after worship service, dear Lord, but, but that we can worship together Lift your name up in song and in word and in prayer together as a church family. We thank you. I thank you for each and every one that is gathered here. Their presence here is a blessing to us. We pray that you would bless them through this time together. We pray for our church family that's not here, dear Lord. We ask that you would continue to watch over them and care for them. Look forward to the time that we can come together with them whether it would be here within this building or with you. But we rejoice in that time together. Dear Lord, we thank you for, for the prayers that we've already seen answers to. We thank you for Janet and her, her being able to be back in worship service with us. We thank you for the healing of those that a few weeks ago didn't seem possible. We ask your continued touch upon their lives, dear Lord, that you would continue to heal those. We pray for healing upon those that are facing surgery. We ask that that healing process already begun. Dear Lord, we pray for those that are, are facing court trials. We ask that your hand be placed in that that the outcome would be for the blessing of, of all of those involved. Give those involved encouragement that they may feel your presence throughout this whole thing. Again, dear Lord, we thank you that we can come and worship together. We thank you that you have sent us Dennis to bring your word to us. We ask your blessing upon him and his family as he continues to serve us here. Dear Lord, we pray all of this in your son's precious and holy name. Amen. Chapter 27 of Psalms reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an, though an army in camp are against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, 
yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in a shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody in the Lord. Amen. Will you stand with us as we sing and make melody to the Lord this morning?
worshippers
healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Then what could stand against? Then what could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. seated. She's going to, she's going to woo one of these days. I'm telling you, we're going to get off on her. <laughs> Good. Bless you guys. Turn around and bless somebody. Give the worship team a hand. How about we give the worship team a hand? Don't they do well? Appreciate the work they do. In, the, in Psalm 24, it's called a Psalm of Ascent, and it was when David, you remember the Ark of the Covenant was out at this guy's house, and because the Ark of the Covenant was there, dude was getting blessed, all this stuff was growing big, and he was making a bunch of money. And uh, David went out there, felt the presence of the Lord, and said, this isn't right. God's presence ought to be in the uh, uh, city instead of out at this field. And uh, so he looked at... Uh, local newspaper on how you move arcs and uh, he did it wrong people start dying anybody remember the story at all and uh, he goes oops uh, how about if we go to the bible and he went back to the bible and seen how you're supposed to carry the ark and uh, it was like really good uh, jewish historians say that psalm 24 was written about that event and in psalm 24 it is an antiphonal chant where one group is bringing the ark in and the other group is on the walls of Jerusalem. And so it goes like this, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And that is the group that's on the outside bringing the ark in. And the ones that are on the, uh, on the gate, they go, be lifted up ye everlasting doors. And then this group goes, that the king of glory may come in. And then this group goes, who is the king of glory? And they're, they're having this antiphonal worship. They're having this worship experience where each one's doing. And then, who is the king of glory? And then both of them together say, the Lord God Almighty, he is the king of glory. Okay. All right. Now, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do that. Uh, here's the reason. What it, what it represents is. We are recognizing the presence of the Lord. 
is coming into our city. For them, it was the city. But what we're going to say is we recognize the presence of the Lord in our meeting. Okay? And so I'll help you. But this side is going to be the ones carrying the presence. Say amen. amen. Yeah, they don't have the presence of the Lord, but we do. Okay? <laughs> but what we're doing is we're carrying it to them. Okay? And so I'll lead you, and I'll do it this way. And then I'll lead you. And, that, and then when I do this, uh, I'll say what we're going to say. And then I'll lead you. Then I'll lead you. And I'll lead you. And I'll lead you. And then when I do this, we'll all say it together. Okay? Because at the end, we're going to go, who is the King of Lord? The Lord God Almighty. When we do the Lord God Almighty, don't give me a golf clap. It's, it, how can the Lord God Almighty be a golf clap? No, it, he's, he's a touchdown. All right? So it's like the Lord God Almighty. Okay? Now, what was that scripture? I forgot it. No, it's, uh, it's Psalm 24. All right. Yeah. All right. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Be lifted up, you ancient gates. Be lifted up, you ancient gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors. Be lifted up, you ancient gates, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? That the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord God Almighty. He is the King of glory. All right, you want to do it one more time? <laughs> Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Be lifted up, you ancient gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors. Be lifted up, you ancient gates. That the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord God Almighty. He is the King of glory. You guys are pretty good at that. Now, we just recognize the presence of the Lord among us. And he is the king of glory. Amen. And uh, anybody in here is sub uh, subject to a miracle at any time. Last, uh, last week we talked about when people are, have loss, that there are five considerations that we need to remember when we're taking hope to those who have lost hope. Or... They're in the midst of lost, and we're coming to minister to them. And there were five things that we consider. One of them was prayer. Remember that? The second one is love. Mm -hmm. The third one? Emotion. I got my note takers right up here. Okay. Emotion, number four. Timing, and number five? The miracle. Yeah, the, you, we have to remember, and we're different than any other people on the earth is our God can do a miracle at any moment. And so we go with the hope of the miraculous everywhere that we travel. Okay. Today I want to talk about timing. And uh, how many people have ever been frustrated with the timing of the Lord? All liars, raise your hands. Huh? And, it, and it always seems to me like God's timing's not right. And then he catches up with me. And finally, he does what he should be doing. Okay? <laughs> what I knew he was going to do all the time. Have you ever done this one? You really, I mean, you go into the pits of despair because God isn't showing up. He isn't doing what he ought to do. And you are like at the end of the end and your rope's got a knot in it and it's slipping out of your hand. And then God does it and you go, I knew God was going to do it all the time. <laughs> Okay, uh, I want to talk about Jesus. I'm going to, because whenever I preach, I'm talking about Jesus. Okay, uh, and I'm going to go to John 11 in a few moments. I'm going to lay a foundation, but I want to talk about, because I know that the Lord has done this to angels for me. Because here's what happens. He and the guys get the message that Lazarus is sick. And Jesus goes, why don't we hang around here for a couple more days? And I know that 
I have sent up urgent prayer requests that needed an answer in 9.6 seconds or my world was going to fall apart. And Jesus just elbowed an angel and said, I think I'll hang around for a couple of days. And, and that's the kind of situation we're going to look at. But then he does come. And when he does come, here's the deal. It's perfect timing. God can only function in perfect timing. Uh-huh. But we don't realize it's perfect timing until after our timelines have been met. It's all, almost always after our timeline or before our timeline. I think when I finally get ready, way out here, I'll be able to do something. And God goes, nope, now. <laughs> right? And he just, uh, here's how God thinks, teaches his kids to swim. He just throws them in the deep end. Because he's pretty well assured in his ability as a lifeguard. And he goes, ah, even if they die, I can resurrect them. It's not really a big problem. And so God will have you in over your head mm, pretty much most of the time. And that is sometimes it's before my timing. And then sometimes it's way after my timing. It's hardly ever that my timeline and God's timeline is the same. Anybody ever had that miracle? I don't know if I've ever had that miracle. God's timeline and my timeline were exactly the same. I have my plan. God totally works it out exactly like I think it was going to happen. Anybody ever had that one? Not me ever. Okay. But when it works out, guess what? It works out. And here's, here's the thing. I, could, I got four scriptures running in my computer right now that I could show this to you. Is when it finally works out, what it does is it increases our faith at a whole nother level. Because in the in-between, my timeline and God's timeline, uh, 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 we, he works on patience. I don't like that. I think patience are great for other people. Other people having patience with me is like amazing. Me having patience with them, not so much. Uh, but in, in, in the discrepancy of timelines, is God does build patience, but it is the groundwork where great faith is going to be released when we get to God's timeline. Anybody ever had it just all fall apart? You don't think anything's going to work here at the depths of despair? I'm just talking about me. And uh, it's really, really bad. And then God does something amazing. And you go, I knew God was going to do it all the time. And then this is just like so awesome. God's great. Do you ever, anybody ever had that happen? At that God's great, so awesome moment, what happens is your faith level goes up in God's ability because you went through that difficult time. Does that make some sense? Okay. Now, I want to give you an illustration. Were you able to find one page? No? Okay. Uh, I want to give you an illustration. And then I'm going to give you a place in the scripture to back up that illustration. Then I'm going to come back to this uh, Jesus thing just for a minute. Talk about timing. Anybody remember clocks with faces on them back in the old days? Just trying to see how old you really are. Everybody that can remember a clock with a face, you're old. Okay. Uh, do you remember the clocks with the faces had three hands? What were they? It's been so long you can't even remember, right? The hour hand, the minute hand, and the... She goes, I know the answer. Second hand, second hand, second hand. And she's right, because that's the one I want to talk about. She's exactly right. Okay? How long... And, and, and here's... Uh, how many times a day are all three hands aligned? Twelve. How many times a day are all three hands aligned? Twelve. Once every hour, right? Which one... Uh, uh, is on each hour the longest? The hour hand. Yeah, you're exactly right. The hour hand. The hour hand is there for how long? An hour. The minute hand is there for how long? You guys are just like great. This is real easy for me because if it gets harder than this, it's out of my league. But right here, I'm good. Okay, how long is the second hand there? Second. Okay. Now, here's what I want you to think of. Think of one of those clocks, if you can remember one. I was going to have Paige put a picture up here for those that didn't, but we didn't work that out yet. I uh, haven't ever seen one, but here's a face clock. Remember the 12, uh, 12 3, 6, 9. Uh, she even still has one. Back to 12. Okay. There's an, there's an hour hand, and, and what I want you to think about is that is the will of God. It's there for an hour. Okay. And then the minute hand, I want you to think of that as being the ways of God. Because God has a will, but God has a ways to get his will done. Does that make sense? The Bible says, Psalm 107, God showed his acts to the children of Israel, but he showed his 
ways to Moses. Would you rather see somebody do something or would you rather want to know the hows and the whys of them doing it? So I get to see them do it, but I go, oh, they did it like this because they're like that. Uh huh. So what the Bible says is Moses has a relationship with God in his person. And so God goes, this is why I do what I do. This is how I do what I do. And all the other people, they're just happy because bread's falling out of the sky. Well, quail's falling out of the sky, bread's coming up out of the ground, right? And they're just going, I'm glad to be eaten. And Moses goes, God, I don't want to eat from your hand. That's good. I'll eat it. I want to know your heart. Come on. The ways of God. So what's the, what's the hour hand? The will of God. The minute hand. The ways of God. And the second hand is the timing of God. And whenever we align with the will of God, the ways of God, and the timing of God. Now, there is the release of the fullness of the life of God in those moments. Now, please hear me. You do not need a million of those in your life. You just need a couple. It, it's not that all day long you have that happening. It's that 12 times a day it does. And those 12 times will set courses. It release power. Uh, align things so that you are walking in the fullness of the life of God. But we need for what are the three things? The will of God, the ways of God, and the timing of God. Now, know this. The ways of God cause, I, I want to say blend, but connect. The ways of God connect the will of God with the timing of God. That'll make sense in a minute. Go ahead and write it down even if you don't understand it. It's a standardized test question. <laughs> it makes no sense. You just mark the box that's supposed to be there. Then our school will get funding. Okay, I'm political. But uh, no, write this down. The ways of God connect the will of God to the timing of God. So you got the picture, the clock, three times, the will of God, ways of God, timing of God. I'm going to give you an illustration to make it work in your mind for a minute, and then we're going to go to Jesus, because timing is important in the Lord. Okay. Uh, yeah. There's a scripture here somewhere. Yeah. Uh, First Chronicles 22. If you get a phone. She doesn't have that back there. I just decided to do it. Uh, if you have a, a phone or a Bible, you can turn to second, or First Chronicles 22 if you want to follow. If not, you can just listen. Uh, David's dying. He brings Solomon in. Solomon had an older brother that should have been king. The guy tried to uh, take over the kingdom and go set up his own coronation service. Abijah was his name uh, and uh, uh, Bathsheba which was uh, the love of David's life she comes in and says hey, hey Dave I'm sure she called him Dave uh, do you know that this boy over here is trying to take uh, my boy's position <laughs> really uh, do you know that this guy over here your other son has set up and he's trying to become king and you've already told Solomon Solomon's going to be king and so David off of his deathbed uh, orchestrates a coronation service for Solomon instantaneously. And so Solomon is now the king of the nation. But David is on his deathbed. He's doing it all from his deathbed. And he calls his son in, Solomon, in 22.7. David said to Solomon, son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house to the name of the Lord my God. Okay. But now look in verse 8. If not, please hear my voice. The word of the Lord came to me. So whose opinion is it? The next thing that's going to be said. Is it David's or is it God's? God's. Okay. Here's what's going to be said. The word of the Lord came to me. You have shed much blood, have had great wars. You're not going to build me a house. Because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. Whatever that means, it means. But is David. David wanted to build the Lord a house. What does the word of the Lord tell? 
No, you cannot. Watch this. But a son shall be born to you who shall be a man of rest or a man of peace. And I will give him peace. Now watch. God works with different people different ways. God made David a warrior and God had anointed him in war. He had a mind for war. He never lost a battle his whole life. And he whipped everybody from Goliath to all the Ike guys. Right? Amorites. Parasites. <laughs> sleep at nights. <laughs> all right? You remember? He whipped them all. Uh-huh. Why? Because God anointed him. Why did God anoint him as? A man of war. But in the body of Christ, even in the kingdom of God, there are things warriors can do that peace people can't. <laughs> that builders, I want to say it like that, that builders cannot. And there are things builders can do that warriors can't. A warrior go, yay, raw, boom, take over the land. And then they go, what are you going to do with it? I don't know. Let's go get some more land. And a builder will come along and say, I can't whip those guys and get them off the land, but I can sure build a nice house on it once they're gone. Right? Does that make some manner of sense? And so God says to David, you have been a man of war. Watch this. The way God defeated David's enemies is use David to kick their butt. Okay, defeat them. We're on TV. To defeat them soundly. Okay? Now, here's what you're going to see in the next verse. Is the way God defeated Solomon's enemies is he held them down and didn't let them fight. Both of them have defeated enemies. Both of them have grace and anointing on their life. But equal call, equal position, both of them are kings. But they have different abilities and different graces, and God has different will and purpose for their life. Does that make sense? So everybody take a deep breath. And thank God you're not like your neighbor. Right? Especially if you're married to them. Because the contrast, even in the same family, a father and a son... Can you imagine if David was Solomon's football coach or wrestling coach? It would have been a bad day, <laughs> right? Because David's going, you got to yay raw, get them. And uh, Solomon's going, I think I'll chill for a minute. <laughs> going, whenever God comes on me, yeah, I kill stuff. And Solomon's going, whenever God comes on me, I just chill. I worship, right? I want to make sure I got my point across that it's okay to be you and not somebody else. But I'm way off the preach I was going, but it'll be okay. Okay. Uh, you shed blood. You can't. Behold, a son. Now watch this. The word of the Lord came to me. Behold, a son shall be born to you who shall be man of rest or peace. I will give him rest from his enemies. Solomon never fought one time in his life because God fought for him. David never lost one time in his life because God fought with him. Please understand in your life, sometimes God's going to fight for you and sometimes God's going to fight with you. If you being lazy, not fighting when God's fighting with you, you're going to lose. If you're striving, trying to overcome something and God's fighting for you, you're just going to get tired. <laughs> All right. Sometimes he fights for, sometimes he fights with. Okay. I'm going to make his enemies be at peace all around. His name shall be what? Solomon. I will give peace and quietness to Israel all his days. He shall build the house for my name. He shall be my son. I will be his father. I will establish his throne and his kingdom over Israel. Somebody say amen. amen. Okay, I have a question. Did God choose Solomon? Mm -hmm. Did God know Solomon was going to be born? It's right there. Did God know what his name was going to be before he was born? Yes. Yay. That's the truth for you too. God knew your name before you were born. It's God's will for you to be here. God has purpose for your life. Isn't that amazing? Okay. I have a question. How did Solomon come in the earth? Uh-oh. Dan just opened a whole big bag of worms. Because here's what Dan said, which is absolutely true. If there was going to be a Solomon that God would choose that would build a house for him, 
he had to be born. If he was born, his parents had to get together. Amen. Never been a kid in the earth other than Jesus. That didn't happen. Okay. His mama's name was Bathsheba. And his daddy's name was David. And he came into being by an adulterous affair. Now I want to say something. Now go back and clean that up. Make it line up with scripture. Okay. You never came from your parents. You came through your parents. There's never been the mistake of a child born in the earth anywhere. There are a lot of people that live most of their life thinking they were a mistake. And they were not a mistake. They were an intention from God. Come on. Now, was Solomon's date God's idea? Was Solomon's Solomon God's idea? Say yes. yes. Okay. Watch. He was the will of the Lord. David saw Bathsheba. David had hundreds of wives. I don't want to deal with the theology of all that, but I just want to make it down. David had hundreds of wives. He had one woman that was the main love of his life for his whole life. And her name was Bathsheba. And she was married to another man when he saw her. Was Solomon the will of the Lord? Yes. Now watch. David went to the ways of the world to get the will of the Lord. He saw her. He said, I got to have her. And God said, that's all right. Not now. Not that way. Y'all going to look at me real weird, but you got a problem by thinking I'm not right. <laughs> Is me and God agree? No. Now here's your problem. Is God said to David, you're going to have a son. His name's going to be Solomon. And he's going to build a house. And before the earth was ever created, I knew that was going to happen. And it was my will. Watch. That was the will of the Lord. You violated the ways of the Lord. And you violated the timing of the Lord. Now, a right thing became a wrong thing because it was accomplished in a wrong way. The right thing became the wrong thing because it was done in the wrong timing. The hands on the clock were not aligned. You can't just have one of them. It takes all three. Does that make sense? It's not okay to get the will of the Lord in the timing of the Lord apart from the ways of the Lord. It's not okay to have the will of the Lord and the ways of the Lord apart from the timing of the Lord. That's called Abraham. Hmm? I'm going to make you a father of great nation. Woo! Anointing Sunday morning service. God! 25 years later, no little boy. Will of the Lord is, I have a son. Wait a minute. I think I can make a son by the ways of the culture. Maybe what God really meant was, because in our culture, if a servant of a woman has a baby, baby is registered down at the courthouse, the birth certificate is registered in the woman's name. That's what God meant. Come here, Hagar. Uh -uh. There was a will of the Lord. Watch. Wrong way. Wrong time. Bathsheba, will of the Lord. Solomon's got to come. Only one way Solomon can come. David and Bathsheba. Wait a minute. Wrong way. Wrong time. Now watch. The right thing. Somebody say God is sovereign. God is sovereign. Did Solomon make it into the world? Yes. Now wait a minute. Was it the way God wanted it to happen? No. Was it the timing that God had? No. 
That became the biggest scandal in the history of the Bible. And a shadow rested over that family for the generations to come because God's will out of God's time. How about if the adultery had never happened? How about if killing his main captain had never happened? How about if that had never happened? Would Solomon have still come into the earth? Yes. Would the shadow have been there? No. Would the death of other children been there? No. Would the curses that came on the nation have happened? No. Have a question. Anybody in this room think the timing of God might be important? <laughs> Just a scotch of a little bit, maybe. Anybody in here think that God's timing should be more important than your present passion? People jam Bathsheba. Bathsheba was not the problem. David was. Well, there she was. I heard guys preaching. I go, number one, you don't know culture. Number two, you don't know the history. Number three, you have never been around social engagements. Because the way they have it is Bathsheba dancing or seductively trying to seduce David. And they make Bathsheba the bad person. Bathsheba was not the bad person. David was. Because what happened to her was she is a woman taking a bath and all of a sudden the king said, you get to my chamber right now. And if she did not go, she would have died. You have to know culture. She was not the incriminating one. He was the incriminating one. You know why? And I, this is my opinion. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm absolute in the, the area of opinion because he saw what God intended for him. And allowed his passion to overcome his ways and his times. Hmm? Yay. How many people know Jesus never did that? Come on. Jesus is the perfect illustration of this is the will of God. Inside the what? Ways of God. Inside the what? Timing of God. Yay. Okay, now we're going to go to chapter 11 of the book of John. I'm going to show you something. And we'll, uh, is this helpful for anybody? It's just helpful for me. I just. Anybody else got a little bit of passion on the inside of your heart? If you don't, man, come on. Come here. Let me help you. <laughs> I, saw, I saw Sheila trying to give passion to Missy, Missy this morning. Missy, oh, she'll get it. But she was like, Sheila, stay on your side with your tambourine. Just let me sing. <laughs> It was such a beautiful moment. That was, that was David and Solomon <laughs> right, <laughs> right beside one another. <laughs> okay? Uh, how was? Let me ask three or four questions. Did, was Lazarus sick? Yes. Did he die? Yes. Was the sickness the design of God? Say no. No. Was the death the design of God? No, because watch guys, if the sickness and the death were the design of God, Jesus wouldn't have resurrected him. When Jesus resurrected him, it said, it is not the will of my father for him to be sick. It is not the will of my father for him to die. That's going to open up questions for us. Are there people sick that it is not the will of the Lord for them to be sick? Yes. Every time somebody is sick, it is my go-to mindset. It is not the will of the Lord for them to be sick. It was not God's will for him to be sick. Was he sick? Yes. Did he die? Yes. Was it the will of the Lord for him to die? No. Question. Did the ultimate will of the Lord get done on the earth? Yes. Why? God resurrected him. Did the ultimate will of the Lord get done on the earth with Solomon? Yes, he got here. David violated the ways and the will and destruction set over his life from that moment until today. There's still scandal around a guy, the only guy in the Bible that the Bible says had a heart after God because he could see what God wanted and he violated the way to get it and he violated the timing. 
Let's switch to Jesus. Kindred, tribe, nations, tongue of everybody, everywhere will be at his feet forever. Humanity is headed to the feet of the Lamb to worship him with every language. Why are there languages? Wait a minute. Why are there languages? Why are there languages? Does anybody know? It was the curse of God on the earth because men walked in rebellion against God. But in the end, Jesus is greater than your sin. And he will redeem the first curse of God on mass humanity will be redeemed. And every one of those, every one of those languages will give glory to the lamb that redeemed them. Come on, guys. And you know what that took? That took a cross. That was the way of God. And what he said was, I will not violate the way of God. To get what I'm after in the earth. Isn't that cool? Amen. So, just like your life, <laughs> Jesus hears it's bad for you, and he doesn't show up. Anybody got that testimony? <laughs> it just feels like he doesn't show up. Well, if you're in the New Testament, he can't leave you. So that's the good news right there. But it just feels like God's not showing up in my worst day. Uh, let me help you with that. The only reason God delays is he has something better in mind. See, they, they woke up that morning. Everybody woke up with that morning believing Jesus could heal the sick. Watch this. After he died, they, in their mind, it was beyond God's ability to deal with it. Because Jesus is somebody who is the sick. But baby, two days later, they got a fresh revelation of Jesus they'd never had before. Is Jesus not only heals the sick, Jesus resurrects the dead. He did exceedingly abundantly above all they could ask or think in the wrong time, according to men. But here's what happened in that gap. Those sisters kept worshiping. What happened in that gap was it looked like it was bad. Then Jesus showed up. And when Jesus showed up, now their faith level exceeds higher than it had ever been ever before. And they see Jesus on a whole new level. Because they went through what looks like bad timing. Can you just look at somebody and say, amen? That's <laughs> okay. So if you are in that place of timing, here's going to be my encouragement. Stay in the ways of the Lord when you don't know the timing of God. Because what will happen is I can know something. I just feel like this is anybody ever lived where I've lived. I feel like this thing is the will of the Lord. I don't know when it's going to happen. How's it going to work out? Let me travel in the ways of the Lord in between that time until the ways of the Lord connect the will of the Lord to the timing of the Lord. Then everything's glorious. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Jesus walks up and goes, Lazarus. Somebody said he said Lazarus because he didn't want everybody waking up. It was like, Lazarus, come forth. Can you imagine that? And Lazarus has grave clothes on him, still have death on the grave clothes. And uh, uh, Carmen was the best guy that could do it, but uh, the, the singer Carmen. But uh, he came out with a grave clothes still. Can you imagine a mummy walking out of a tomb because Jesus told him to? Hmm? And eyes that were basically gone, just formed back, kidney just started working, uh, uh, endocrine system, just got legs, muscles just grew on. It, Jesus said, hey, La hey, Lazarus, come here a minute. Boom. Here he came. Amazing. That just bypassed any healing anybody ever needs. Jesus can do it because he did that one. When did he do it? In right timing. In the right timing way because it was the will of God. Good. I saved the best for last. I just got a few minutes, but I want to help you with something about the timing of the Lord. Here's uh, three main points. Number one, 
is some things God delays. Really want you to hear what I have to say now. Anybody feel like they've been to church? You're just like, yeah, I just feel my heart's encouraged. Okay. Number one is sometimes God delays. Here's what I want to help you with. In this one, it's a God delay. Here's number two. Sometimes people delay. And something may be the will of the Lord, and it may be the timing of the Lord, but somebody's not doing something that's causing it to line up. Sometimes people delay. It's true, isn't it? You guys got a people delay. You do. And watch, we're just going to talk for a moment, is you still get to build patience and faith in line of they're stupid. They're, they're stupid. Because <laughs> it's just stupid. <laughs> Okay, so watch. Somebody else is not doing something right doesn't mean that God's still not going to work it out the way that is according to his will. It's just going to be delayed. They can't stop it. They can only delay it. So don't get so frustrated with somebody else thinking they're stealing your blessing and going to rob you of your destiny. They really ain't that big. Everybody used to say it like this. You didn't give it to me. You can't take it away from me. Anybody remember a guy in the Bible by the name of Lot? Huh? Abe had all this stuff, gave some of it to Lot. Lot and his guys were fighting. And, uh, and Abe comes up to him, says, Lord, under divine direction, goes, uh, there's a great lush land here. There's a desert right there. You choose which one you want. All of it's my stuff anyways, what Abraham says. What does Lot say? I'll take the garden. You get the desert. Right? What does Abe do? You worthless grand, uh, nephew, you trying to take what God gave me. I bind you, you spirit of stupid. What do he do? Take it. Because here's what he knew. You can take stuff favor gave me. You can't take the favor that gave me the stuff. Amen. You got to take it. I've still got the favor. I will make a desert blossom like a rose because God will use me to do that. And he did. Right? So sometimes it's a people delay. Remember Jonah? God told him to go this way. Which way do you go? That way. Caused some real trouble for some guys. Remember the sailors that were with them? They were about to die and all like that. And they throw dice and go, it's your fault. And he goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> and then they were in a real dilemma. This is right in the Bible. It's like it would be a comedy show. It really would. And then they're going, wait a minute. Their God showed, his God showed us that this storm's because of him. But if we throw him out, his God's going to get mad at us because he's going to kill us. But if he stays in here, he's going to kill us. If we throw it out, he's going to kill us. What are we going to do? Dude, Jonah goes, I'll jump. <laughs> For real, it's right in the Bible. <laughs> Along comes a fish, boom. What does a fish do? Ah, at the speed of God. Do you know that Jonah got to Nineveh in the same time as if he had went the right way? Had a buddy that said it like this, when God was designing your destiny, in your stupidity. <laughs> and he just sends grace to catch up. Watch this. You know why? Uh -uh. For real. When Jonah was going this way, he was not in the way of the Lord. He was rebellious. When he got in that boat and he got in that storm, he goes, this is my fault. I repent. It was the way of the Lord. The whole time he's in that fish, he's crying out to God. He's not crying out for his life. He's crying out that he's rebelled against. Read it. It's Jonah chapter 3. Read his prayer. Oh, God, forgive me. Oh, God, forgive me. Oh, God, forgive me. Boom. Fish pukes. Even fish can't stand rebellious Christians, right? <laughs> Boom. Pukes him up on the sand, and he's there right in time. And he just starts saying what God told him to say back long way, a couple days ago. <laughs> yeah, 40 days. And the whole daggone city repents. You know what happened? When he was in that boat, he got in the way of the Lord. In the way of the Lord, it connected to the will of the Lord. And the Lord goes, timing is not an issue for me. Now, God caused the timing to align. Isn't that great? So, if somebody else is causing a delay, they cannot stop it. It's just delay. And then number three, 
Some things God delays. When God delays, he's teaching you patience. I know you don't like it. Suck it up. Nobody else does either. Just learn it because if not, you're going to go around a mountain again and learn some more. Okay? He's teaching you a new way of who he is. He's being God to you. And in the delay, just let God be God and rest in him in the delay. If it's somebody else, ask God to, to uh, let king's hearts be moved. Don't get mad at them. Keep blessing them. Somebody else is delaying. Then number three, and I'm halfway done with my preach today. We'll be done by one. Uh, no. And number three, and this is very important for us to understand the difference and the discernment of the spirit within us can show us. Some delays are the devil. They are the devil. They are demonic. It is an enemy. An enemy is fighting and the fight of that enemy is causing a delay in the will of God in the earth. Now, here's, here's point number one. The will of God will be done. The enemy is not strong enough to stop the will of the Lord. But the delay is real. The delay is painful. The delay hurts. The delay causes damage. Huh? And it is the enemy's work that is delaying it. And we have the ability to stop it. There is, I'm going to give you three things. There is a key to living in a delay where the enemy is the reason for the delay. And that key is prayer. It is don't break relationship with God. Don't blame God. Here's what happens. The enemy delays something. People blame God. They get mad at God. They stop praying. And the stop praying is what's elongating the delay. <laughs> okay. Here's a sidebar. All warfare is about worship. Every bit of warfare is about worship. Because the devil is saying, I can get you to stop worshiping God by this problem right here. The enemy only has one desire to stop worshiping God. This is where I want you to see it. Therefore, all warfare is about worship. Will you worship God when you don't understand? Yes, I will. Will you worship God when it's hard? Yep, that one's settled. <laughs> What's your response to people being mean to you? Worship, <laughs> right? All warfare is about worship. And, and the highest form of warfare is worship. Once I worship, no matter what the enemy does, there's nothing else he can do. So in the midst of delay that is caused by the enemy, my position is I worship the Lord in the midst of the delay, and I keep contact with God. You just became invincible. I didn't say invisible. I said without the ability to be defeated on this earth. If it's a delay that's caused by somebody, I know how to deal with it. If it's a delay that's caused by the enemy, I know how to deal with it. If it's a delay caused by God, what am I going to do? I'm going to walk in the ways of the Lord and connect the will of the Lord to the timing of the Lord because I refuse to not be in the way of the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Let me give you one illustration. It's in Daniel chapter 10. Daniel starts praying. Yay. Got some prayer buddies. With him. He's lifting up worship to the Lord. He fasts and prays. He kicks it up a notch. How many people are fast and pray? Uh, I, say, I say it like this. I've done a 40 days of saying I'm going to start a fast. <laughs> and then fast one day and then it's, I wasn't even hungry for the last three days. But now I said I'll fast. Oh my gosh, I'm starving to death. It's only seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Come on. Right? Watch this. 20 days later. It's Daniel chapter 10. There's no answer from heaven. 20 days later, he's still fasting. Day 21, Daniel's out there. He, he, he's the vice president of the country, so he has bodyguards. This is the Bible. It's amazing. <laughs> he sees an angel. Guys can't see the angel. They fall down and start shaking under the power of the angel 
like their joints are going to come out. All of his big bodyguards that are protecting him against all the bad guys, one good guy shows up called an angel, and all of them are just on the ground in seizures. It's in the Bible. They don't even know what's happening. And the angel shows up, and here's what it says. Hey, Dan. Here's what it says, first of all. Hey, be loved of God. An angel's never been loved by God. What the angel says is, hey, be loved of God. Here's what he said. That first day you started praying three weeks ago, I was released from heaven with the answer to your prayer. But the devil hindered me. I was in warfare with the prince of Persia, and I'm a messenger angel. It's Gabriel. I couldn't whip him, so I just went back and got Michael. Michael took care of him. <laughs> so, and, and Michael contends with the prince of Persia. He blocks, and then uh, Gabriel does an end run around him. And he comes to Daniel, and he goes, From the first day you prayed, I was released. Let me translate that. By day seven, we get mad at God because God has not answered our prayer. And what we find, find out when we lift open into the spiritual realm was it was never about on day one, God released the answer. It was about warfare. And he shows up and basically says, glad you kept praying. Don't ever stop one day too soon before the answer comes. Paul said, I was coming to you and Satan hindered me. Didn't stop me. He delayed me. Sometimes God delays. When God delays, it's going to happen. It will just happen better than you ever thought. Yay, God. Sometimes people delay. All they can do is delay. Yours is still coming. Sometimes the enemy delays. When I am in a place where the enemy is delaying, I worship and pray. Sometimes I don't know what it is, or maybe it's all three. What in the world am I going to do? I don't care about the need. I care about the prescription. And the prescription is I keep crying out to God and I keep worshiping him. As I do that, the will of God, walking in the ways of God, runs into the timing of God. And God calls us forth in everything that was hindering us is broken. Yay, God. And let me tell you what time it always is. It is always the time of salvation. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. So no matter where you've been or what you've done, I got some really good news. Jesus came to the earth to die on your behalf, to take your sin upon him that you wouldn't have to carry it for you. Then when I come to him, he removes it as if it didn't happen. And he walks into relationship with me and he stays in relationship with me all the way through this life. Takes me to heaven when it's over where I will be with him forever and ever and ever. Today, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If anybody in the room's ever been stupid and ran away from God, none of you guys, but you might know friends, that God said, go this way, you went that way. The minute that I look up into heaven and go, hey, it's me, I messed up. He forgives me and he moves me at the speed of God back to where I should be. He accelerates the timing so that I can end up where I should be when I should be there. Amen. So I'm going to pray for you. Our worship team is going to come. Anybody just feel really good? Tell me if you feel like this was just for me today. Would you just raise your hand? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to preach another message to see who else. Can, it's just for the non-kid.
done. <laughs> Let's pray. I'd like to ask you to stand. We're going to pray. Lord, there are people here today, you've already shown me, that it was a day of transition, that the timing of the Lord has aligned with the will of the Lord, and they've stayed in the ways of the Lord, and the blessing is about to come on them. I thank you for that. Father, I pray for those of us that are out of time with you, that by the Spirit, you would just align us with your timing right now. And Father, I pray where people have delayed things, that you would sovereignly step in, that king's hearts would be in your hand, that you would, that you would uh, impress and influence human beings to do the right thing in order that your purposes can come forth for the sake of your people. The Lord, where the enemy is hindering things, we stand together as touching this one thing. You said that you would give us authority to bind serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. And so I pray where the enemy is hindering things to those gathered in this place right now, that you would cause that influence and power to be broken and that you would move us into the timing of God. And I pray for the grace on the ways to walk in the will and align the timing. Jesus' mighty name. Amen.